Guys, welcome back to part two of Optibox, powered by Sportology TV. In part one, we had a former England international, someone who's known for his striking capabilities in Bobby Zamora. He spoke about his former clubs, Fulham, West Ham. Um, so definitely give that a check out. Uh, this time around, we've got a teammate of his. Somebody who played with him at Fulham is none other than Paul Koncheski. Paul, welcome. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you very much for the welcome. No worries, no worries. It's good having you on. How's uh, things where you are at the moment? Strange times, like you say. It's, um, it's, it's been mad. It's, it's crazy at the moment. But in a, in a little bit, it's been quite good. I spent a lot of time with my, my children. But other than that, it's, it's time to get back to doing what everyone likes doing in my eyes and playing football and getting out to watch some football now. Have you enjoyed the little bits of football you watched at the end of the season and then a bit of the Champions League and stuff that's been going on? Yeah, I've loved it, to be fair. It's, it's obviously a lot different um, with, no, with no crowd and the fans, but it's, it's something to get back to watching. And I think, to be fair to everyone involved, it, it, while, while it was back on, it, it was fantastic for everybody. You're currently assistant manager of Billericay Town. How are you enjoying that? Yeah, it's, it's quite new to me. Um, it's, I only started it two weeks ago now, so... It's quite new, but something that I've always wanted to try and go on to do in, in, in my career. And um, this, this chance came up with Jamie O'Hara, which was, was something I couldn't turn down because I, I didn't want to miss the boat. So it's, it's a good opportunity for me to start uh, a club like Billericay. Is, is there uh, anything else you looked at when you sort of stopped playing football? I know a lot of players, former players, have become commentators, pundits, gone into the media game. Was it? Was that something you were looking at as well? Uh, I went into West Ham. I look after, like, I do some mentoring at West Ham with the academy boys, if you like, so under 23 downwards. So I go into there and do some stuff with them boys, which I really enjoy trying to give something back that I, I've learned in my, in my career on, on playing my 20-year career. So I like to give something back to them to try and go and have the best opportunity that, they're going to have in their, in their football careers. Um, and yeah, I've done, I, do, I do like doing some media. I do a little bit of radio and I, and I was lucky enough to go and do the, uh, the Fulham playoff final at Wembley. I got to go there and, and be involved in that game. So it's, um, listen, you, I have to keep my options open. If you know this is system manager stuff, if, if it don't work, then you, you need something to fall back on and, and I want to still be part of football. But we're going to remain positive and it is going to work out for you. So, <laughs> definitely. Uh, let's talk about a club you mentioned then, West Ham. Um, one of the, you know, apart from Charlton, who you had played a long, lot of games for, you moved to, you had a season out, you had a, a, a loan at Tottenham, then you went to West Ham. Let's talk about West Ham season. Um, scraped it and survived in, in the league. Just, just give me your sort of review of, the, of their season. Um, it was a tough one because the first year I was there, we got to the FA Cup final and uh, we finished ninth in the league or eighth in the league. So uh, you, you build on that and it, it went the opposite. It was fine for relegation and it was, it was a crazy time really because you had some, some very good footballers at the club and it's a massive football club. But you don't want to keep getting a yo-yo team. So to be fighting relegation was, was a tough ask for a club like West Ham and Lucky enough, towards the end, we scraped out of it. Um, I think that's just team spirit, you know. Team spirit on and off the pitch and the bonding we had. Uh, I think that's the, that's the little bit that got us away from the bottom. What areas do you think that West Ham need to specifically improve on for next season in order to, to be out of that position and actually get higher up on the table? Um, I'd probably say up the front a little bit more. Um, we relied on Mikel Antonio a lot towards the end of the season. And maybe if you ask Mikel, he, he wants to play wide. So for him to go and score 10 goals in, in a position that he doesn't play is fantastic for him. But I think we need a, an out and out goal scorer, uh, a prolific, prolific one that's played in the Premier League and, and knows what was, we, what's required uh, to, to win football matches. Uh, I think just speaking about it there, you, you signed Sebastian Haller. Um, it didn't really work out in his first season, did it? No, it hasn't. He's had, he's, he's been on and off. He's had injuries, and uh, but when you look back at Haller's career, he, he normally plays with a, a, a strike partner up a, alongside him, where 
as, as at West Ham at the moment, the manager only plays with one up. So he's found it tough. Um, he ain't the one that's going to keep running behind to get onto loose balls and all that. So it, the shape hasn't helped him, but it's, it's been a tough uh, first year for him to settle in. Another player I wanted to talk to you about, everybody loves a good English player coming through the ranks. And somebody that's impressed this year again, or somebody who's done well towards the end of the season especially, has been Declan Rice. Um, there seems to be every big club linked to him, whether that's rumours or whether that's factual, we don't know. Uh, United were linked to him at one point, Man United that is. Uh, Chelsea have been the latest name linked to him. I think Frank Lampard might take a liking to him. Do you see Declan Rice staying at West Ham much longer? Uh... That's a tough call, you know, he's, he's been West Ham's best player probably for the last two seasons and um, when, when you're fighting relegation, maybe every, not every season, but you, you're down fighting near the bottom, in your career you want to go and play at the top and, and Declan, for, for me, would, would want to go and play at the top and play Champions League, but I think he's a, he's a West Ham hero at the moment um, and I think he'd, he'd love to stay for another, another year at least and if we can build a team around him um, and keep them big big boys away from him, I think uh, we could have a great side if we build it around Declan. Do you think that, obviously you say he's a hero, you know, West Ham hero now, because um, he's having you know, a good run of form, but if in the past he's sort of made some mistakes, he's he has had a lot of stick, and do you think that that's a sort of a thing that the up-and-coming players who come through the ranks are sort of have more pressure on. And so when they do make mistakes, they almost get get more stick for it than, than others who sort of get brought in? Um, yeah, a little bit. We've got to remember Declan's still young. He's a young, he's a young footballer. He's trying to learn his trade, but he's been thrown in the deep end, if you like. He's played over 100 games now for West Ham, which at a young age is, is fantastic for him. Um, and West Ham fans want, want the best. Uh, so it's obviously hard for him because making a mistake, it's easy sitting sitting in the in the stand. I he, oh, he shouldn't do that. He shouldn't do that. But like I say, he's a young boy, but he don't hold back. So he, he he's willing to make mistakes, and the the, the fans just need to know that he's going to make mistakes. He's, he's young. The best players in the world make mistakes, and Declan's going to be one of the best players in the world if he carries on the way he's maturing. What do you make of David Moyes as a manager? I think he's done well. I think he's um, he hasn't really had his side that he wants to maybe play. He needs to add one or two of his signings, if you like, because he's been given the squad that he's been given, other than one or two players he bought in January. So it, this this market will be interesting, I think, for every West Ham fan, if you like, to to see how David Moyes goes about buying and selling selling the players that he wants. Let's move on to talking about Leicester. Um, they did miss out on the top four, finishing fifth. Do you think that they really should have been in the top four? Do you think it was a sort of a very poor ending to the season for them? <laughs> it's a, that's a tough one. Um, I think if you say Leicester finishing top five at the start of the season, everyone would, would think that's a fantastic season. But going so well and been in the top two, three, four for, for so long in the season before lockdown, um, then you have to say it's maybe, it's, it's a bad season coming towards the end. We've, we've come into lockdown, they haven't started so well and, and it's cost them, cost them points and it's cost them you, you, uh, Champions League football. Um, do you see Leicester pushing forward and maybe cementing top four? I know it's, it's difficult to say because we know United are going to sort of strength and not, they've got the money, they're already linked to Jadon Sancho and many other transfers. Chelsea have made some fantastic signings so far and it looks like they're going to carry on signing some great players as well. Uh, Leicester may not have the capability of them transfer funds available. Do, do you feel like this was the year and if not, do you feel like they can actually push into the top four next season? Um, I think this was a ma massive missed opportunity for them. Because, uh, like you say, the, the, the bigger teams, if you like, are going to go and spend. We, we've already seen them. Um, and Man City are going to want to get that title back because if you lose it once, you, you want to get it back as quick as possible. So, yeah, I think they're going to spend and it's going to be tough. But with a club like Leicester, and listen, I, I played there and I know what the owners are like. They're ambitious people. They're, they're going to want to push and push. And if I know the owner, he won't stop until he gets his Champions League football. and. 
I, I, I couldn't write them off because I, I know I know the club and they've got fantastic players. As long as they can keep hold of the players they've got and build on, then I think they've got a great opportunity again. I want to talk to you about Liverpool's fantastic season that they had. Do you? How impressed were you the fact that they were obviously miles ahead of anyone else? And also, do you think that next season they can they can replicate it and, and keep keep the winning way, but also with that far margin, really? Uh, that was fantastic. That was that was the best in the league by by a country mile, um, and it, and it proved towards the end. I know we had the lockdown, but the season was finished. Um, and I think from start to finish, that was the best. And the fair play to the manager, he's, um, he, he's got them playing to the way he wants them to play. And by adding one or two, they're, they're going to be a tough task again to beat. But like I said before, I think teams like City, Chelsea, um, they're going to they're gonna add. And I'm hoping this season's going to be a, a, a much closer season. And obviously Liverpool run away with it this year. But listen... They're the, they're the ones to beat, and if they don't lose any players and they and they gain, they're going to be stronger again. So they're going to be the ones to beat. But I don't see it being that marginal uh, this season. Who stood out for you for Liverpool? I know the, the, the full team were great there, but certain players stand out when you talk about Liverpool season, especially Mane, Salah, uh, Virgil Van Dijk, Alisson. Um, but which one player stood out for you? Like you say, the, the, the whole eleven, but. For me, I, I think Jordan Henderson don't get enough um, enough praise. He, he, he does all the dirty work that you don't probably see. And I think he led the team properly on and off the pitch. And the spirit they've got at Liverpool at the moment it probably comes from him getting getting uh, the new players around and how they want to play. And I think he's he's been probably Liverpool's best player and probably one of the Premier League's best players this year. Well, before we finish, we did ask Bobby in the first half, so I'm going to ask you as well. Um, it'd be interesting to see if you say some of the people. But obviously, you played for you know a number of different top teams with amazing players. But who do you think was the greatest player that you ever played alongside? Um, when I went away of England, I'd say Paul Scholes by far. But every day working with him, um, I'd say Steven Gerrard. Just the, we know how good he is and was, but to see his standards he set for himself, for the team and for the club, I think um, he'd be the best one that I played for with, without a shadow over that. You know, you, you say that, we spoke to Bobby, Bobby said um, with Steven Gerrard was the best player he played alongside with England, but I asked him, who's the best player you've shared a pitch with, so anyone, any one of your opposition, and you said Paul Scholes. He goes that there was a game where you guys played for Fulham, um, and he goes at you with the left back, Clint Morrison was there, and he was pinging balls to Ronaldo all day. And he goes, yeah. like, I remember Paul Scholes is doing it. Do you, do you have <laughs> memories of uh, Scholes doing that sort of stuff? Yeah, but, you know, when you play guy, likes of Ronaldo and you've got Nani and Giggs and Scholes picks up the ball, you, there's only one thing. He, we knew he could pass, he could play, and he, he was the, probably the best footballer that I, I, I've seen and, uh, and been around. And it was, as a fullback for me, it, was, it wasn't nice him picking up the ball because you knew, even though you know where it's going to go, you can't stop it because he's, he's that talented. He, he put it on a sixpence for Ronaldo, Van Nistelrooy, Rooney, whoever it was, you, he had the best players to play with. So um, he, he was up there with, with the best, yeah. Paul, I wanted to ask you actually, because you faced Ronaldo one-on-one, -on -one, um, did you feel like he was going to be this player that he's turned out to be? Him or Messi, they've taken over the world for the last couple of years, being the best two players in the world. Um, there's a lot of debates on who's the best, but that's opinion. Uh, that's everyone's opinion is different on that. Um, but did you see Ronaldo being this sort of player, just dominating world football? Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, I, obviously, like you said, I played against him so many times, and he what he does now at a higher standard. He, he done when he first came to Manchester United. He could go on his left foot, his right foot. He was quick. He was strong. He could jump. He, he was um, he's a, on his day. He was unplayable, and um, and. I don't know, you probably see his documentary and all that stuff he does. He, and he was the first one to him, get his own chef and his own doctors. So, you know, he, he, he wanted to be the best. And at 33, 34, 35 now, he's, for me, he's the best. And you could see it from, from a young age to, to what he's gone on and done. At this present time in world football, who impresses you as a football player? There's a lot of uh, 
good youngsters coming out, especially Kylian Mbappe for PSG, you know, Neymar's, they're still the Messi and Ronaldo's of the world. But what players sort of do you like watching at the moment? Um, I like, like Kevin De Bruyne. I love the way he plays. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to see him live. And when you see him live to, on the TV, the work rate, um, the, the physical stuff that he puts in that you don't really see on the TV, it, it opened my eyes a little bit because he's probably one of the best in the world again. And you don't see him doing the stuff he does until you go and see him live. And specifically, I watched him to see how good he really was. And for me, he, he, he was up there. And like I said about Jordan Henderson, for me, he, he was up there with him this season of, of player of the season. I do want to ask before we finish, actually, that um, obviously when you played, VAR wasn't, wasn't a thing, but it's such a, it's changing the game, to be honest. What do you think of it? Do you, do you like it? Or do you think the game was better before? No, I don't like it at all. Um, and f f as a player, thinking if you scored, you don't know because you have to go to VAR. The fans, they can't really celebrate because they have to go to VAR. And once, if it's a goal or, or not, it, it takes two or three minutes to, it's a goal. The, the, the moment's over. It could be a 90th minute winner, but the moment's over because it has to go to VAR. So... For me, I'd like to see it gone um, and that, from playing and not playing now. I think, the, I think the first instant, if you see it and you think it's a goal, it's a goal. I, I don't think you, you have three, three minutes' time to go to the TVs and, and wait for the in your ear old to think if it's a goal or not. For me, I, I, I'd like it seen gone. Okay. Cool. Uh, Paul, uh, thank you very much for joining us. No uh, problem. Hopefully, when the football kicks off again and there's some juicy gossip or some juicy transfers that happen, <laughs> we will try to bring you back on and talk about some sort of transfers that are going on. But I want to appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. So uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, Paul. No, thank you guys for having me. It'd be good to be back. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Take care. See you thank you. Soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Another great show of Box to Box brought to you by Sportology TV with two former teammates, Bobby Zamora and Paul Koncheski. Make sure you stay tuned. We have plenty more coming up, loads more videos, loads more football, boxing. Make sure you stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button, leave us some comments and make sure you share. See you next time.